we brought the salt back for round two. Who still has their salt from last week? Do you really still have it? No, you don't. Is it really in your purse right now? Somewhere in your purse. That's amazing. I love it so much. What we talked about last week. I got the salt. Say, I got the salt. Yeah, um, if you can try to close that door, unless there's someone right there, because I don't want to disturb. Oh, there's a monitor right there. Hello. My goodness. I almost was like right there in your lap. Look at that. That would have been great. I was just like, <laughs> like, would you guys have been able to move on? Like, if I just face planted on the floor just now, I wouldn't be able to move on. I've been like, amen, we're all going home. <laughs> Praise God. You're salt. Good night. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I got the salt. So last week we talked about how we are meant to be salt and light in this world. Amen. You have had an encounter with Jesus, or at least I believe that you have. And every time someone had an encounter with Jesus, they left that encounter with Jesus changed. Amen. Am I looking at a bunch of changed people in this room tonight? Am I looking at some changed people in this room tonight? Amen. That's right. Say, I know Jesus. So I got the salt. We're gonna be starting over here in the book of Matthew chapter five. We're gonna start here again over in verse 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world. Say, I'm the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. We've been talking about being salt, being light, sharing what we know about God, sharing what he's done for us to help lead those to him. Amen? We're talking about sharing Jesus. We're talking about being salt, making this world better because we are believers in this world, amen? So let's pray real quick. Father God, we just thank you so much for what you're doing in this place tonight. We just thank you for this word. We just thank you for Jesus. Lord, we just thank you that he, he, his, his, his body was broken like bread and his, his, his blood was like wine spilled out for us. So that way we could have salvation, Father God. We just thank you so much for Jesus. We just thank you so much for adding salt to our lives so that way we can go and impact this world with you. In Jesus name we pray, amen. So we got salt again. I made sure that you guys, there are salt, there's salt missing on these chairs. Who's got extra salt? You little salty thief, what are you doing? <laughs> so here's the hope and the goal. I want the next 30 years for you to keep this salt packet in your pocket. Commit right now. The same pants, the same salt, the same everything. Commit right now. Say, I will do it. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> No, I mean, obviously it's silly. You know, this is like, a th I don't expect you to take this with you and to cherish. I don't expect it to be in your purse tonight. Like the fact that it's in there, that's amazing. That's awesome. Look at that. Did you just grab that one off the chair and pretend that was in your purse? It was off Jody's chair. <laughs> that's amazing. See, the whole idea is, the re I like that it's in a packet, you know, because this is an acceptable amount of salt. And it might even be a little bit more than acceptable amount. Because who knows? I mean, obviously salt is great. And a lot of foods, they desperately need salt. I mean, the, salt is vital. Salt is necessary. That's why you are salt. You are vital. You are necessary for God's plan. God wants to partner with you to help spread this wonderful news about Jesus Christ, to help spread love and light into this world. Salt is needed. You are needed. And one of the things that I, that I feel, I'm still holding on to this salt. Like it's just, I'm gonna hold it the whole night. I'll try. <laughs> but like we talked about how in Mark 16, 15, it says, he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but who does not believe will be condemned. Say, you know, we've got to go into all the world. And I know some of you guys are like, whoa, that's a big tall order there, Pastor Cody. <laughs> I'm not going to go into all the world, right? Like literally, 
Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what your plan is. Jesus said, go into the world. And, and, and that can seem weighty and that can seem like a lot. And there's like a lot of pressure. I already put down the salt. I already lied to you. I'm so sorry. I, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But like, we are supposed to go into all the world. And, and, and at times that seems weighty. That seems like a big burden to carry. But really what Jesus is trying to say, what I believe Jesus is trying to say is he wants you to go into your world. He wants every area of your world to be affected by your salt and the light that you carry. You need to go into all of your world. Like, what is your world? Your world is your own home. Your world is your cul-de-sac. Your world is your, your, world is your school. Your world is the community that you live in. Your world is just like baseball and sports and track and it's, and it's studies and it's friendships. It's, the world is your life. Go into this world and share the good news, share the gospel to the whole creation. It says over here in John 3, 16, we are big friends, fans of this verse because it's so amazing. It's so wonderful. It says, for God so loved the world, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And when you look at that word loved out of John three sixteen, it, it means to love, Good definition, love that. Love means love. Wish well, to take pleasure in, to long for. So God so desperately loves the world. And that seems so like contradictory. It's like, oh, we're supposed to be in the world, not of the world. How could God love the world? Because he created it. God created this world. He created everyone. He created all of you. He created all these people. And it's why he so desperately loves the world. And he so desperately longed for relationship with you all. He so desperately wanted to take pleasure in a relationship with you. He wanted the joy of having this bond with his son and his daughter. That's what we have been blessed by this amazing opportunity, this privilege, this access to become part in, and be in the presence of this family of Jesus Christ just so simply because he loved and longed for it. And Jesus so willingly did it for us. And so, so what we have to do as believers, you know, we, we talked about like, what is our purpose? And, and, and we know that our purpose is to love God with all of our heart and to love our neighbor like ourselves. Love God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength, and then love our neighbor. So we gotta get good at loving the world. We got to get good at adding salt and light into the world. You, you know, I mean, who, who all has ever had like a bowl of mac and cheese without any salt in it? It's so just like, ugh. You don't like mac and cheese? Okay. Service is canceled. Everyone go home. Good night. It's been fun. Amen. <laughs> But maybe you haven't had enough salt on your mac and cheese. I don't know. Like, like, the, like my thing is like, it, it is so needed for that mac and cheese to be everything that it was meant to be. It so desperately it was missing the salt. See, this world, when, when, we, when we left, when we were not able to have access to God anymore, when we were not able to have this, this relationship with him anymore, when, when sin entered the world, we lost our salt. We lost the light that was within us. We, we lost, and, and then the world became overcome with this darkness and this blandness. But we as believers, we've got to go and to love the world, to love on the world. Like, I, like, like we care so much about the food that we eat, we add spices to it so that way it's better. Why don't we care so much about to the world that we add spice to it? Why don't we care so much about the world that we bring his joy, we bring his goodness, we bring his love, we bring his patience, we bring his care, we bring this salt to the world. Say, I'm salty. I'm salty. Salty. It doesn't sound right to be salty. <laughs> John 8, 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Man, I don't know why. I mean, we read this verse last week, but for whatever reason, when I, when I read it today, it really hit differently. It said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, 
you won't have to walk in darkness. You see, people that don't know Jesus, people that have never encountered him, that have never experienced the goodness, they don't know anything else. They don't know what it's like to follow after the light because they don't know what the light is. They only know darkness. They only know the knowledge of this world. And in Matthew 6, what's so crazy, you know, it talks about how your eye is a lamp that provides light for your whole body. And when your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. And when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And this is key. If the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. There are so many people in this world that feel like they've got it all figured out that if they just meditate just the right way, if they speak things into existence and try to manifest things, or if they sense the vibrations of the world or whatever it is, they try to connect to the universe in their own way or form, but that's because they think that that's what they're supposed to do, but they don't realize and recognize that there is this light that's been made available. And the reason that they don't realize that this light has been made available because there's not enough people, there's not enough Christians out here throwing salt out into the world. There's not enough people out there spreading love into this world. Not enough people spreading goodness into this world, showing them what light actually is. You have, you have that light. You have that salt. And it's been freely, freely given to you. And this is the thing that we've been trying, that I've been trying to like, help you understand is why, why, why can't it be you? Why not you? Because now what Jesus has done for you, it says over here in Romans 5, 1, therefore you've been made right in God's sight. Now you are perfectly capable. Now you are perfectly eligible to spread salt because you once were bland. I joked on Jennifer last week and I said, you are so bland. And then I felt so bad that night I messaged Annalise. I was like, please tell Jennifer she's not actually bland. But at one point in time, Jennifer was bland. That's right, you were bland. She was real bland. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> I'll message you later. <laughs> At one point, we were all bland. At one point, we had a darkness that we thought was light. But then when we had that, that revelation of what Jesus Christ did for us, at least for me, anyone else in the room, when you finally realized what it was exactly what Jesus did for you, that you realized, hey, this darkness is actually, what I thought was light is actually darkness. This light that I have access to, this is the real light. And, and, and we talked about these salts and I, and, I, and I wanted you to put it in your pocket and keep it with you. And so that way, when you leave the house and you go when you, and you go into the world, you go into the community, you're like, I got my salt packet today. I'm ready, I'm ready. See, God wants you to be purposeful in this world. He wants you to go in the world ready to be salt. And again, I'm not wanting you to put this in your pocket and keep it on you for the next 30 years, but, but you know, it's in a package like form. You're meant to take it with you. You're meant to put it on the go, but you're not gonna use it if you don't have it with you, right? I mean, that sounds like pretty self-explanatory. Like you won't use it if you don't have it. So like we as believers, we as people, we have to make sure that we're still keeping the salt on us. We're gonna make sure we're still keeping the salt within us. We're reading the word. We're worshiping God. We're talking to him. We're praying we're listening, we're learning, we're understanding what it means to be salt in this life. Amen? But you've got a purpose in your heart. I'm not gonna leave it behind. Amen? It says over here in Colossians 4, 5 through 6, it says, walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious and seasoned with salt so you may know how to answer each person. I'm not asking for you to have all the answers and you probably don't. And you probably won't always know exactly the right thing to say every single time. But if your word is seasoned with salt, that means you've been spending time with the word. You've been spending time with Jesus. So the way you talk to people reflects how Jesus would talk to people. The way you interact with people reflects how Jesus would interact with people. The way you do certain things or, or go about, the way you carry yourself, the confidence that you can have in yourself because if you know who you are in Jesus, see that is when you spend time with him, you've been seasoned with salt. You're not allowing that blandness to get on you and to be a part of you. You were outdoing the bland with his salt. 
you're, you're purposing your heart to get salty with him and then go forth and give it to those that you encounter. We talked about Zacchaeus last week over here in the book of Luke chapter 19, and, and I'm gonna summarize it for you, but essentially, you know, we, we had a, a man who was a tax collector, basically more or less a, a glorified gangster that was out there extorting money from his own people. And these people saw that Jesus wanted to dine with this man. He wanted to go to this man's home. And what they didn't understand was, is it's because Jesus actually loved this man. Jesus actually understood that this man who was trying to make himself feel better by having more money or having more nice things or having been invited to the coolest parties and the fanciest of fancy things, like dude had a very materialistic mindset clearly because he was extorting his own people. He was a Jewish man that was robbing Jewish people for the sake of his own benefit. He wanted to to, to, to make sure that he was fulfilled, but it was all on his own. And, and Jesus saw this man and he saw him in his broken state. And he said, that is not how you were ever supposed to be. You were never supposed to provide for yourself. You were never created to live this way. And that is why I see you up in that tree. And it is important that you must come down right now. And in fact, he said, hurry. Because it's urgent. When people start to recognize the value that Jesus sees in them. Like if we go over here to book, uh, book of Luke, chapter 15, it's not my notes, but I did feel like we needed to go there today. So it's like not in my notes, but it is mentally in my notes. But anyway, over here, book, uh, Luke 15, starting in verse eight, it says, this is about the parable of the lost coin. He just talked about how the, 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 the shepherd leaves the 99 for the one sheep so that we can make sure that it comes back to the flock. And then he starts talking about a woman with lost coins. He says, suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp? There's again with that light again. Light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it. And when she finds it, she will call in her friends and neighbors and say, rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. And in the same way, there's joy in the presence of God's angels and even one sinner repents. We talked about how repentance is just a change of thought, a change of direction. When one person recognizes that they've been in a broken state and they turn to Jesus, they have repented, they've changed the way they thought, they changed the way they were walking and now they're walking in his way rather than their way. And, and this is what is so interesting about this because this woman, she has 10 coins and she loses one just because it's lost does not mean that its value has diminished. It is just as valuable as it was, whether it is found or lost. And so when Jesus looked at Zacchaeus, he saw his value. He saw his purpose. He saw what he'd been created to do, but yet he also saw how he was living. He had compassion. He had love. He had insight wisdom for this man. And it never says in that account, it never says in Luke 19 exactly what he said to Zacchaeus. It never said it because there's not a script. There's not a playbook that you got to follow. There's not this, you got to do step A, B, C, and then you'll make it to Z and that person will be born again. No, it's not always like that. It's just simply getting in the presence of the world, getting to know them, seeing the value that Jesus has placed and created for them, recognizing and understanding that they're not worth losing, that they're still valuable and they're lost out there and this value is going unfulfilled and unused and un all the uns. <laughs> I don't know the other word for that, but Jesus knew he needs to come back. And somewhere along the way, I, I, don't, I don't know what was said exactly, but Jesus said something. He shared with Zacchaeus, God's love, God's care, God's goodness, God's mercy. And Zacchaeus, he had to repent. He had a moment of repentance. Because it clearly in that moment, in, in a matter of a couple of verses, he said, I'm going to restore 
the fortunes of those that I've robbed. And, and, and I might even give it up four times over if I need to. And Jesus said, salvation has come to this man's home today. It's vital and necessary and urgent. This world needs salt. This world needs his love. This world needs his care. And and again, I I don't want to put this big like weight or this heavy burden on you because it's not, not just you. You're not in this alone. God wants to partner with you. God wants to come alongside you and he is the salt. You know what I mean? Like, He's the one that, that is adding the salt to your life. Like he, he is the goodness that's on your life. Like you don't have to stress. You don't have to, 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 to strive in this endeavor because he's on you. He's on you. And what you have, the world needs. What you have, your world needs. You might not have all the answers to end world hunger. You might have all the answers to to make sure that there's no more oppression. You might not have all the the, the answers to make sure there's no more injustice in this world, but I believe that you have the answers to help your world. That answer is Jesus. That answer is salt and that answer is light. That answer is his love and his care. See, I got the salt. Say, I'm a light. Say, I'll go. I will go into my world. And I'll be salt and light to this world. I want to pray for you real fast. Father God, (laughs) thank you so much for what you're doing in this place. Thank you for every single one of these individuals, Father God. I just thank you for the calling that you have on them, Lord. Thank you for sending your son for us, God. Thank you for being the light that lives within us. Thank you that we can now live in this light, that we don't have to live in the darkness. Thank you that we now know the truth so that way we can share the truth. I just thank you, Lord, that you give boldness to these students, that you give courage to these students to step up and step out and take advantage of every opportunity to start to see the world the way that God and Jesus saw the world. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for instilling that within us and giving us a heart for your people. In Jesus' name. Real quick, before we leave, I, I, I believe I know every single person in this room and I, and I believe that, I believe that you're all saved, that you all know Jesus. And, and if you don't, we can talk about that later because I don't wanna miss that opportunity for you to receive him as your savior. But, but I think I know everyone in the room. And if I'm wrong, please correct me later. I'd love, I don't, I don't wanna miss your opportunity, but it just feels right right now that Everyone's heads bowed, eyes closed, just an attitude of prayer right now. If you're in this place tonight and you say, you know what? I have not been the appropriate (laughs) amount of salt for this world. Maybe I've been a little too salty. So therefore I'm a little bit (laughs) bitter to sounding to some of these people or or I haven't been salt enough. I, I haven't been salt enough that I almost look like the world. And if people can't recognize that you're salt in this world, then you're probably living like the world. And we're supposed to love the world, but not be of the world. We're in it, but not of it. Because we're, we're supposed to be in it and make it better. We're supposed to be in it and add Jesus to it. We're supposed to be in it and add some love to it. And I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad here by any means whatsoever, because I feel like we've all been there. We've all needed some times of recommitment and just re energizing our faith and just setting our fervency on him and what he wants. And so if you're in this place tonight, you say, you know what? I have not been adamant 
about putting forth his goodness in this world. I've not been adamant about sharing joy, about being a source of peace, about being a beacon of hope, about leading and guiding people into his love. And you say, I want to be better. I want to follow after him better. I want to see the world the way Jesus saw the world. I want to be salt. And I want to be a light that leads people to him.